In prayer for this service this morning, the Lord directed us, and I'd like to preach to you. And the title is A Name or a Number. A Name or a Number. I, I don't know about you, but uh, I, like, I like it. I went to a place. Now, don't nobody fall out with me. I met a, I met a fellow one time. I was, I was, uh, I was over here at, at the... Uh, North Lakes, uh, Willie, I was in North Lakes, this was several years ago, I was in there with a bunch of them and I was playing ball, that's back before I carried one, and Renee, I was, I was on the with it program, I was getting with it, and uh, that's back when I could dunk something besides Chips Ahoy, and so I was uh, playing ball in there and I met this boy and uh, we got to talking and he had went to the University of North Texas and played three years there and we became Friends, I've I've ministered to them, been to their house, and prayed with them. Uh, they're down the street at Denton Bible. Uh, all of his family is in the, in the Baptist Church. Uh, when he needs prayer, he calls me. Don't 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 tell Tommy Nelson that, but anyway, he does. Uh, and and we became very good friends. But he's got a brother-in-law that works over at the Byron Nelson. Now that's the that's the big golf place. Now, I would never play over there. It's where the professionals play. But his brother-in-law works there. So he said, what we're going to do is we're going to show up over there. And he told me when we're going to show up. And he said, you're going to be treated like you've never been treated before. He said, but you've got to go in and you've got to put it on your credit card and then they'll reimburse you. Now, I've heard that before. So... I said, now, hold, hold on. He said, I promise they'll reimburse you. So I went over there, and I pulled in to the Byron Nelson Country Club. This guy opened the door for me and said, hello. He stuck his hand in my car. He said, and, and your name is? And I said, I'm, I'm Randy Snow. Great, great. He, he opened the trunk for me, pulled my old raggedy clubs out of there. I mean, he got on his little phone when I walked away, and he called a man that was standing at the front door. I get to the front door. The man says, Randy Snow, so glad to see you. <laughs> I walk into the desk. That guy has already been described. I've already been described. He calls me by name. He asks me how my drive over was. Everywhere I went that whole day, anybody that was associated with the Byron Nelson that come to me spoke to me by name. Now, I'm going to tell you, by the time I got through, I felt like I was somebody. <laughs> now, when I looked down at my card and saw my score, I knew I wasn't nobody, but I felt like somebody because they was calling me by name. See, I wasn't to them. I wasn't just another number. And then when it was all over, they took me back and they fed me some roasty beef and gravy and mashed taters and, and all kinds of stuff. It was wonderful. And then the guy come out and all of them start going, oh, no, oh, no. Because when that guy come out and he come over and he sat down and he started talking to me, he gave me a little sheet to fill out. Did they call me by name? Did they treat me nice? Did they wipe off my golf clubs? Did they give me cold water? Did they give me a towel? Was they respectful? Was they kind? And they all understood that I was an undercover agent. And they was going to be scored on how they had treated me. You know what? I told the guy, I said, now look, I'm, a, I'm an old country boy. I play at TWU when I get to play for $16. So this over here, this is royalty to me. I mean, excellent was ever check mark. There's something about when people call you by name. Now, I'm going to preach to you on a name or a number. Because that's how you're going to be recognized. Are you hearing me? Throughout all of eternity, you're going to be recognized either by a name or a number. Let's look to the Word of God. In the book of John, if you would stand with me, chapter 10 and verse 3. 
the book of John chapter 10 and then we're going to look to the book of Revelation. John chapter 10 and verse 3, the Bible says, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name. He calleth them by name, and he leadeth them. Now if you turn over to the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. says, He that overcometh the same. Anybody planning on overcoming? He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. Now turn over to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17 says, and that, verse 16, and he causeth all, talking about the Antichrist, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Talking about the name of the Antichrist. A number or a name. Father, I thank you for your word and everybody that is in this house and I pray that the Holy Ghost would speak to each and every heart. I pray that you would draw us to what you desire to speak to us today. Minister and move in these altars in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's a difference. A number says you are an individual. A number says that you are nothing more than a statistic. A number says you are an item, you are, you are identifiable in 2017 by your zip code. How many of you have been asked for your zip code? Your name says I am valuable. Your name says I am worth something. Your name says I mean something. The Antichrist will make this planet a huge penitentiary. Everybody will be known by their number. Christ, the Bible said, and the books were opened and the names that are written down is your name written in the Lamb's book of life. There's the difference, and it's a big difference. One is prison, and the other is paradise. It's either a name or a number. There was a man that retired that I will forever be indebted to. I had the privilege when Brother and Sister Johnson pastored in Goshen, Indiana. They took us over into Canada, and we saw one of the huge plants. In 1964... Leonard Crimp, the vice president of Heinz Ketchup. Anybody love ketchup? Come on, can I get a witness? I've actually pulled up at restaurants before, and after we got through, they come out and said, we're going to have to charge you for all the ketchup you've ate. I baptize everything in ketchup. He was the vice president, and he resigned in 1964. And, and, and in November... The 29th of 1963, he was scheduled to fly back to Toronto. He was scheduled to fly out on flight 831. That plane was overbooked. Imagine that. That plane was overbooked, and so they took him and they took 11 other businessmen. There was 12 total, and they was taking them to another flight. They was moving them down about 30 gates, he said, to flight 277. He said, I had flown enough back and forth 
And I asked them, I said, is there any way I can stay on flight 831? It's a bigger plane. They said, look, your luggage is going to be on 831, but you're all going to arrive at Toronto at the same time. If you would, sir, please, uh, Mr. Leonard Crimp, that is your name? Yes, that's my name. He said, well, we, we've been asked to put you on flight 277. He said, I went on flight 277 and I was dragging my feet and in my mind I was saying, I don't want to go on flight 277. It's going to take a little longer to get there. But he said, four minutes after flight 831 left from its location, it crashed and 118 people died. He was asked, how in the world did he survive? What was the difference that made the change. He said, first of all, there was a God in heaven that knew my name. And he was not through with me. And then he spoke to a woman that called me by my name and asked me to take a different plane. They found his luggage in the middle of the burned debris. The Metropolitan newspaper said that his Bible was opened up to Psalms 121, verse 7 and 8. And it said, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forward and even forevermore. He was a member of the gospel tabernacle. Mrs. Houghton had drove 25 miles the night before and asked Sister Crimp, is everything okay with you and Brother Crimp? Is everything all right? Because I was awakened in the middle of the night with a heavy burden to pray for you. She said, everything's fine. He's on his way back from a flight. She said, nobody's sick. She said, nobody's sick. She said, all I know is, is I was given his name to pray for. He was a member of the Gideon Internationals. They have their headquarters in Nashville, Tennessee. They call for their prayer partners and the, and the members that work for them. Can I tell you that on November the 24th, they had read his name out and all of the Gideons there had prayed especially for this businessman that God would watch over him and protect him knowing that in just a few hours the plane that he is scheduled to be on is going down. I tell you, it makes a whole lot of difference if you're a number or if... God knows you by name. Turn and tell your neighbor, he knows my name. My name is written down in glory. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. And nobody can take my name out except me. He said, I don't believe that. You can turn away. Demas forsook. We are not of those that draw back. We are not of those that turn away. Hebrews talks about that. I don't have time to preach it this morning, but I'll tell you, you ought to make sure this morning that heaven knows your name. In Acts chapter 9, I was in preparing for this message, I was overwhelmed at the times where God spoke and he said their name not once, but twice. He's trying to get a hold of Saul of Tarsus. Saul is persecuting the church and God smites him on the road to Damascus and says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he turned him around and said, there's a man named Ananias whose, whose house is on Straight Street. I'm telling you, God not only knows your name, friend, he knows your address, he knows where you live, he knows everything about you. Hallelujah, you ought to surrender and make sure that your name is written in glory. In 1 Kings chapter 19, there's a man in the cave and he goes to him and says, Elijah, Elijah. He calls him out by name. He needed a personal God. Elijah needed someone. Elijah needed someone who just wouldn't tell him about God. 
but he needed a personal encounter with God. Matthew chapter 10, Jesus spoke and he talked about two sparrows. And he told how that you could buy for a farthing, you could buy two sparrows. But for two farthings, you could buy five sparrows. In other words, if you had two farthings, you got a free sparrow. They'd throw one in for free. And he said, but there's not one sparrow that falls to the ground that the God of heaven, the creator of the universe, doesn't stop and oversee the funeral. There's not one sparrow. And then he said, are you not much better than they? I'm telling you, friend, there's value. We get value on a lot of things that doesn't matter, but there's no greater value than the human soul. I'm telling you, friend, God is for you this morning. He's loved you with an everlasting love, and he's calling you by name if you'll surrender to him. He goes... The Bible tells us that the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm not a digit. I'm not a statistic. I am somebody. Hallelujah. He knows my name. Glory to God. Exodus chapter 3. He said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here am I. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, Samuel, a young boy, is in the house of the Lord. And he hears the voice of God. And he gets up and he runs to Eli. And what does Eli finally on the third time perceives that it's the Lord? And he said, the next time you hear the voice, you say, here I am, Lord. Speak for thy servant heareth. And the Bible says that he heard him say, Samuel, Samuel. He didn't say 1,249. He said, Samuel. Mark chapter 10, there's a blind man that's over in the corner. He knows that Jesus is passing through and they try to hush him up, but he cries out the louder. And they say unto him, Bartimaeus, be of good cheer, for the master calleth for thee. Hagar, an outcast in Genesis chapter 16. She's praying and after the Lord speaks to her and Ishmael is spared, She says these words, God sees me. He knows me. Are you a name or a number? See, a relationship is personal. A relationship with God is personal. I am afraid that there are too many that are associated in the church world that are going through a ritual instead of a relationship. There are some that are in the house because that's what we was taught to do. There are some that are in the house It's out of a custody case instead of a companionship. Listen, this is a relationship. I'm not here because I'm forced to be. I'm here this morning because I love being in the presence of the one who loved me and knows me by name. Let me tell you what you are to the world. (coughs) Well, I really, you know, I, I really don't know about this church thing. I... You know, I I mean, I think you people are all right. Let me tell you what you are to the world. You're a number. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Everywhere I went, let me see your driver's license. Anytime I try to get something, what's your social? My social what? Your social security number. 
When you die, do they call Washington, D.C. and say, oh, no, they passed away? No, because you are a number. I'm not trying to bust anybody's bubble. To the Antichrist who set in the spirit of the Antichrist is at work right now. You are nothing more than a number that is helping promote his agenda. Unless your name is written down in glory. Then you have a name. Uh -huh. Woo! Glory to God. I don't know if you're getting a hold of this or not. I, I, uh, an automated unit. The earth under the Antichrist will be one concentration camp. Are you hearing me? I, I've talked to different men that have been in prison and they said, I realized the moment that I had lost all humanity is when I was identified by my number rather than my name. I was called a number. I was just another speck on the card. I was just another statistic. Listen, friend, the spirit of the Antichrist that is working right now, listen to what's going to happen. The church is going to be caught out of here. He's going to call us by name. We're going to be caught out of here and the Antichrist is going to set up his reign and everybody will be classified with a number. And you will not be able to buy or sell unless that number is on your forehead or in the right hand. You say, man, all of a sudden this message is taking a turn. I know it. It's meant to. Because I'd rather be notified and known by my name. I'd rather be identified. See this, I, I got this this week. Nudge your neighbor and tell him this is good right here. In the book of Genesis chapter 4, Cain, what happened to Cain? He was a murderer and he was cursed and he was the first marked man. In Revelation chapter 13, all that are cursed receive the mark, either on the right hand or on the forehead. The Bible begins with a marked man, and it's finished with a world filled of marked men. Listen, when you go against God, friend, you are marking yourself to follow the spirit of the anti-Christ. You are going in the way of rebellion, and God in his sovereignty, God in his love and compassion is not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. That's why today the door of grace is open. That's why there's opportunity today for you to have your name written in glory rather than a number for the Antichrist. Freedom is a gift from God. I said freedom is a gift from God. The cost of evil is slavery. All throughout history, men have fought and gave their lives to set their nations and men free from slavery. The Bible said, He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. Get, I want you to think about something. Can you tell that we are moving more and more to a centralized authority? Our liberties are being taken. Somebody needs to wake up in here this morning. Can you not tell that we are being forced and moving in our world today? Idolatry today, image worshipers. In the United States of America, uh, okay. The Bible said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove. If I've heard it once, I've heard it before. Don't be square. Don't be such an old hardhead. You're just an old fogey. 
You've got to be sympathetic to the propaganda. You've got to conform to what's going on. This is 2017. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys said, We will not bow. We will not conform. We will not give in. We will not fall down and worship. John chapter 8 said, If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. We're living in a day of moral defiance. We're headed towards the spirit of the Antichrist in a moving way. Just like in the days of Jesus when they was calling for Barabbas, a thief, over the Son of God, we are in that society today. It's a universal mark in a unified world where human degeneracy, moral revolt, Let me tell you what's going to happen. It's upon us right now, and we do not realize how close it is. The forehead, if you read in the scripture, He told them in the book of Deuteronomy, when you take your children, place the scripture on their forehead. You find that the, the children of God will have on their forehead. But the children of the Antichrist, what's going to happen is the trumpet will sound. The church is going to be caught out of here. The dead in Christ, those who loved God, died looking for his appearing are going to be resurrected. And the Antichrist is going to set up his reign. And everybody that does not go with the Antichrist will be forced into taking the mark. You will not be able to buy or sell if you do not take the mark of the beast. Once you take the mark of the beast, your soul is eternally damned. Somebody said, well, I'm just, I, I got a good friend of mine. I, 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 I haven't talked to him in a day or two, but I did not too long ago. And this is what he told me. This is, this is, I mean, this is how his mind works. He said, I know where your mom and dad live, and I know they are good, godly people, and I know they are going in the rapture. And he said, I know your dad has a lot of guns, and he has a lot of ammunition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and your dad's going to be in heaven so he won't care. I'm going to take his guns and I'm going to take the ammunition and I'm going out in the woods and I'm going to live off the land. I will not take the mark of the beast because I know if I take the mark of the beast I'll be eternally damned to hell. You will not be able to buy. You will not be able to sell. You will not be able to function in the world unless you take the mark of the beast if you miss the rapture. Now, if you're in a place where they're taking and they're pulling your fingernails off, if you're in a place where they're torturing you, if you're in a place when you can't stand for God right now, when the Spirit of the Lord through the church is here, what makes you think you're going to be able to stand for God and not take the mark of the beast 
when you can't stand for him right now, when the spirit of the Holy Ghost, well, I'm strong enough. Listen, friend, you ought to be known by your name rather than a number. I want the musicians to come and help me. When I was about 15 years of age, they started putting the barcode on the food. Do you remember when that first came out? We went to Piggly Wiggly grocery stores. Anybody remember Piggly Wiggly? Mom got a loaf of bread, and on that loaf of bread was the barcode. Oh, my goodness. What in the world? I remember, I remember, it was before the days of cell phone. We walked around. We, she was, she was, I mean, she was crying. She said, I don't know if I ought to buy this bread or not. We got it home. I remember them vividly talking about why just any day now the trumpet's going to sound any time now. It is so close right now, any day. I mean, I was scared as a a 16-year-old boy. I'm saying every day, Lord, help me. I don't want, Lord, help me. I mean, every time we sat down, they had to open up the bread, you know. Look at this. Look at the mark of the base right here on the bread. I was down feeding the chickens. We had 7,000 of them. We had a big cart. We'd pull it up. We'd put the feed in the bucket. You'd dip it up and put it, and you had hand pushed it all the way around the trough. Mom had already gathered the eggs. She had went up to the house. Mr. Bill Halsey pulled up. He come by about once every six months. Our neighbor down the road was having trouble with one of his cows. And so he told mom and dad, said, I got to go down there and see him. Said, jump in the truck. We'll run down there and see him. They jumped in the truck and went down to, went down to check on, on and, and I finished the feeding. I come back up to the house. Now, we lived out in the country. I run in the back porch and the screen door slammed. And mama... Daddy. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord, I thought I'd, I thought I'd, I'm, I'm, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I was down on my knees out in the yard. I run around, I run to the barn, I run back down to the chicken house. I run back up to the house. I went down into the basement. I mean, this was serious. I'm saying, if y'all are playing a trick on me, come out now. They never come out. I'm down on my knees because the neighbor they went to see, he had a he had a habit of talking. And they come back. I was never so happy to see a truck pull in the yard. My dad could tell I'd been crying. He said, Son, you're 16 years old. We just we just went down the road. He said, I just he said, what was it? Mama knew. Mama knew. Mama's got a way of knowing that stuff. She looked at me and said, you thought you'd miss the rapture, didn't you, boy? I said, you're right. I did. I started crying all over again. My daddy started crying. I'll never forget it. Sitting in an old mahogany table. Sitting in the living room. He said, listen, I want to tell you, you don't have to be fearful. You don't have to worry about that. You can know that your name is written down in glory. That your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And your sins are covered under the blood. But I knew enough to know that I didn't want to left. And I didn't, I didn't want to be left. And I didn't want to be a number. I wanted to know that my name. Now listen, eternity is a long time. And if you miss heaven, you're going to remember this message. 
You hear me? If you miss heaven and you're left behind, I'm praying right now for folks that if they are left, that they do, God help them somehow not to take the mark because if you take the mark, you'll eternally be damned. But the best thing to do today is to have your name written down in glory. The trumpet's going to sound. You, you may not believe me, and you may think I'm all foolish. I'm telling your friend right now, if I feel it in my heart, I know that I know that I know that the trumpet is about to sound, and the church is going to be caught out of here. Father, I pray right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that you'd speak to us. I pray that you'd draw us should speak speak Lord to every heart and every life in this house you know those you know those you know those whose names are not written down you know there's nothing that's hid from you and I pray Lord should there be that one here today that they would come and they would cry out for forgiveness they would find you as Lord and Master Should there be those here that are weary, I pray you'd strengthen them. I pray you'd help them to realize that life is just a vapor. It's here for a moment and it's gone. And what does it compare to the eternal weight of glory that is before us? Minister and move now in this house in the name of Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you need the Lord. I want you to step from where you're at and come and join these that are in the altar right now. You need the Lord. Step from where you're at. Come on.